The best villains are the ones we can understand. Pure evil, while daunting, is boring. Thanos is a great villain because what he wants is not unreasonable. He wants a sustainable universe. He has seen and felt the effects of overcrowding and climate change firsthand, and he recognizes that if such behavior continues, worlds will collapse. He believes he is the hero. He is saving the universe from itself. He sacrifices all for his cause. How he chooses to fix the problem is, of course, wrong. He cannot be allowed to destroy half the universe to save the other half. He doesn't get to make that call. But in my logic brain, I can understand why he feels entitled to make that call. Here on Earth, we face a similar problem with pollution and overusing and ruining our planet, leaving future generations to deal with a dystopian nightmare. If I had the power to change that future, would I? Another villain I love, love, love is Lady Tremaine from the 2015 Kenneth Branagh film Cinderella. This beautifully simple film allows for complex characters to simply exist and blossom as they are, unfolding slowly to let us see all the facets of humanity inside one simple household. When Ella's mom dies and her father marries Lady Tremaine, his first love lingers. Ella's mother's beautiful soul lingers in Ella's words and actions, and in the decor of the house, the simple lifestyle Ella and her father live, and more. Ella's father is willing to let Lady Tremaine make changes because he wants her to feel at home, but he is reluctant to make space for Lady Tremaine in his heart, and she knows that. Likely, Ella's father married so that Ella would have companionship and attention while he was gone and be taught ladylike behaviors, and Lady Tremaine likely married for security and money. This isn't a judgment on either, rather I feel bad for both, acknowledging that their society was flawed and options for both were limited. Maybe Lady Tremaine hoped for love to grow. If she did, that hope died with Ella's father. Lady Tremaine let herself surrender to fear. She no longer had income and had to be extremely frugal to maintain an illusion of her former lifestyle, allowing her daughters to marry well, which would protect both them and her from future poverty. In firing all the servants and making Ella do all the work, Lady Tremaine showed her fears and her anger. She resented Ella's existence and the fact that she had been loved. It's doubtful Lady Tremaine had ever truly been loved, and now she never would be. So she tried to crush the spirit of the one person she knew had been well and truly loved because it was flaunting and annoying and in her face all the time a reminder of what was lost and gone forever. The spectacular crux of this version of Cinderella is not the beautiful dress or the love at first sight between Cinderella and the King in the North, no. The crux is that love is stronger than fear. Ella's love fuels her courage and kindness. Her compassion helps her see beyond her stepmother's facade and she understands her fear. More than anyone, Ella understands the loneliness and helplessness that Lady Tremaine endures every day. They are the same, but Ella chooses love over fear. One reaches out, the other lashes out. The most beautiful moment of the film to me is when Kit, that's the king in the north, comes for Ella and she walks down the stairs of their family home, looks at Lady Tremaine and forgives her. But Lady Tremaine does not forgive herself. She does not even understand how Ella has the capacity for forgiveness. Lady Tremaine is so fearful and resentful that hatred distorts her self-image and her worldview. She is left with only her poorly raised children, her entitlement, and her self-loathing. 
and so in the end she punishes herself more painfully than she could have ever punished ella meanwhile ella sets herself and her heart free light from the lifted burden of resentment she is ready to begin a true and loving relationship with mr kit lady tremaine is a lady macbeth type character she tries to pull strings for her ambition and her family but in the end she is the one who suffers a tragic heroine in her own mind and a villain to those around her hello witches women and other lovely listeners i'm hannah the bipolar bisexual host of this bi-weekly podcast of witches and women in this podcast we get to explore the lives of powerful women both real and mythological Strong women have historically been labeled as witches or something else equally troubling, taboo, and easy to justify killing or dismissing. I'm telling their stories because most of these tales are amazing and all of them are fascinating. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts or Google Play, and if you do social media, connect with me through Of Witches and Women on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Of course, be sure you also check out the website, which is the most in-depth and exciting resource I can offer you. When you visit ofwitchesandwomen.com, you'll find fantastic merchandise of both the serious and salty variety. Lots of the merchandise is limited edition, so get it while we're still in ancient Greece. You'll also find the Grimoire Gallery, which is our internet gallery curated with art by today's working artists and featuring witches, women, and goddesses of ancient Greece. If you see something you like, you can support a small business by visiting the artist's portfolio sites to see, share, or purchase more of their work. Plus, you can even buy some of their prints starting at just $15 in the Of Witches and Women shop. If you're not a fan of fake news, then you need to check out the Lamia Library, where I list all of my show notes and other resources and recommendations. Of course, subscribe to the newsletter The Oracle on any page of the Of Witches and Women website. Just scroll down and add your email address. The bi-weekly Oracle tells the shorter, fascinating, more obscure stories that we won't get to cover on the show. It highlights grimoire gallery artists, shares simple spells and book recommendations, and more. So don't miss out. Subscribe today. Medea today is most often associated with the Tyler Perry comedy films, but before there was Medea and her shenanigans, there was the ancient Greek Medea, a powerful sorceress, niece of Circe and priestess to Hecate. Medea was a young, powerful demigod. She was mortal, but with strong ties to her divine relatives. At an early age, Medea fell in love with Jason of the Argonauts, one of the early Greek heroes, and she fell hard. So hard, in fact, that she helped him steal the Golden Fleece from her island home that she and her family ruled. Medea taught Jason the tricks and tips to get the fleece, gave him a magical fire-repellent lotion to save him from the dragon. Yes, there's a dragon. I love dragons. And... She then distracted her family from killing him by killing her brother, chopping him into pieces, and scattering him across the ocean floor. It's chill. So that her father would be focused on picking up the pieces for a proper burial, and Jason and Medea could have time to escape together with the fleece. As they returned to Thessaly, Medea prophesied that one of the Argonauts' family would rule Libya, a prophecy which came true generations later. As the Argonauts sailed for Crete, they faced Talos, a giant man of metal crafted by Hephaestus. Medea single-handedly defeated Talos by hypnotizing him and convincing him to pull out the bolts that held him together, effectively dismembering himself. They returned to Ilicus, Jason's home, and his father, the king, was weak and dying. 
Medea sucked the blood from his veins, infused it with magical herbs, and restored it, invigorating the elderly king. The other king of Ilicus, Peleus, was also dying. Hera wanted Peleus dead and whispered power-hungry words into Medea's ear, convincing her that if Jason became the one and only ruler of the kingdom, he would make her his queen, the most powerful queen in Greece. The daughters of Peleus came to Medea and begged her for a spell to strengthen their father. Medea demonstrated a spell on a ram, cutting an old ram up and boiling it in a pot of herbs. She then used her magic to summon a young ram to leap from the pot, proving to Peleus's daughters that this would restore their father. It was, of course, a trick. So the daughters of Peleus dismembered and boiled him, clearing the path for Jason to become king. Jason and Medea married and had up to 14 children, depending on the myth or legend. The couple settled in Corinth, where Jason's wandering eyes fell on the Corinthian king's daughter, Glaus. The people of Corinth hated Medea and knew she was responsible for the death of the demigod king Peleus. When Medea and Jason divorced, the people revolted against Medea, killing all her children. Medea took revenge by sending Glaus a golden dress for her wedding, dipped in a magical poison, and Glaus melted in Jason's arms on their wedding day. Medea was driven mad by pain, betrayal, and loss. Her children had been killed by a mob. Her husband threw her away after she saved him and made him one of the most powerful heroes of the city-states. Medea fled Corinth in a sun chariot pulled by dragons. There are more dragons. Lots of dragons. She stopped in Athens and then Thebes, where she met Heracles. Medea recognized Heracles' madness as Hera had whispered similar songs of madness into her ear. Medea took pity on Heracles, her nephew, born of Zeus, and lifted Hera's curse of insanity from his eyes. Regathering her wits and beginning to grieve constructively, Medea started to heal, but she didn't heal the same magical priestess and love-struck maiden she was at the beginning of the story. How could she? Medea guarded herself from further pain. She was not without love or humanity, but she was through with second chances. Medea continued to travel throughout Greece. She eventually settled back in Athens and married King Aegis. They had a son, Medus, and just when Medea thought she could begin to live again, danger struck. Aegis' long lost son, Theseus, Da, 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 reappeared, ready to step into his role as crown prince. Medea attempted to poison Theseus when they thought that he was just an imposter, but Aegis recognized him at the last minute and that plan failed. So she convinced Theseus and Aegis that Theseus should volunteer as a tribute to be sacrificed to King Minos and the Minotaur. To learn about what happens to Theseus in Crete, be sure you listen to episode 20, starring Ariadne. But again, Medea's plan backfired, for when Aegis thought that Theseus had died in the labyrinth, he threw himself off a cliff, and Medea had to flee again before Theseus returned. Medea returned to her homeland, Clotius, and upon finding that her uncle had usurped the throne from her father, she killed her uncle and returned her father to the throne, which is, I guess, the best way to say I'm sorry for killing my brother. I don't know. Listeners, let's talk shop. Specifically, the Of Witches and Women merchandise shop. We have beautiful prints and t-shirts created by contemporary artists, salty t-shirts, fierce joggers, magic coffee mugs, witch sister bracelets, stickers, and more merch designed by me as well. Plus, when you buy art, either as a print or a t-shirt, the proceeds go to the hard-working artist. And when you buy the other merchandise, I can afford to buy myself a Pop-Tart. A maybe. <laughs> so. 
Take a look at ofwitchesandwomen.com slash shop. The playwright Euripides endows Medea with qualities he normally reserves for his male characters. Medea plays a huge role in Greek mythology across multiple heroes' legends. Medea is intelligent, she is strong, she is violent, she pushes the plot forward. At first, she is a simple helper, a plot device to get Jason to the fleece. But Medea was more than a simple trope. Medea became the villain. The longer she stayed in Jason's story, the worse she was painted as unstable, jealous, and volatile. And maybe that's the problem. Maybe it wasn't Jason's story at all. Maybe it was Medea's story. The powerful witch, demigod, and princess Medea has a story that starts before Jason and ends long after he is dead. Medea is perfect in her own complex and intricate way. She feels deeply, uses her powers and resources for good and evil, tries her best to know and do right, and defends herself to the death and beyond. Medea and Lady Tremaine both started out so much like Cinderella. They were lovely, influential young women, ready to conquer the world. Politely, of course. Like all great villains, they had the capacity for love, and they had pure intent, and the conviction that they were in the right. Medea and Lady Tremaine both start out vulnerable, open to love, family, hope. Both are betrayed, and learn to guard and protect their vulnerability in destructive ways. In their own minds, they are the tragic heroines. Medea, fleeing a country that hates her, still finds time to save Heracles. Both Lady Tremaine and Medea remarry, hoping for a fresh start. Both are left hanging by death and by the beloved children that their husbands had with previous wives. Both women struggle to survive, but neither will ever show their weakness. Hiding their capacity for love made them invulnerable in their own minds, but it also made them cruel. And as they lose touch with compassion and feeling, but it also made them cruel as they lost touch with compassion and empathy. In their own minds, their pain and conviction is still the moral right. They are determined for their cause because it is just and true. The best villains are the tragic heroes of their own narratives, and Lady Tremaine and the great sorceress Medea were both their own tragic heroes. That's a wrap on today's episode. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure you and your heroines are subscribed to Of Witches and Women on Apple, Google, or Spotify, and please write me a magical review on your podcast app, or a tragically beautiful review, or, you know, a good review. Make it good, so that others can find and enjoy the show as well. Connect to me on the pod and on social media and look up of witchesandwomen.com for even more great content and to subscribe to the Oracle. Please check out the shop now as the season one merchandise comes down in less than a month. This is the end of season one and how better to end it than by saying stay fierce witches. I'll catch you next season. Of Witches and Women is brought to you by SHH Media, LLC.